Hey folks, welcome to another session of miniature painting. I'm Dan, joined this morning by Maddie. Good morning, Maddie. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, all. So, um, right out off the cuff, I have a number of apologies to give. Uh, the first is, is that I'm incredibly unorganised this morning. I've only just got back from a run to the hardware store because I forgot to get stuff last night while I was at the hardware store. Because, you know, you create lists and that's all very wonderful until you realise that you've forgotten to put something on the list. Um, the second of which is that I've had, well, let's say, made no time this week for miniature painting. So this is the very first miniature painting session where I'm actually continuing on with what I was painting last session. Uh, I do not intend to make a habit of this, but uh, sadly the workshop demands, well, the workshop just demands, hopefully it stops demanding very shortly. So with a fresh wet palette and some relatively fresh water and a Agaros Students contrast colour, today we're going to paint the cannon and the crew that we assembled last week. I did get a chance to undercoat them, but that was, I don't know, three lifetimes ago. So, let's see how we go. How was your week, Matty? I just, I'm really disappointed and upset now, Dan. Yeah, I can understand that. No, I'm not sure you can, because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're beating yourself up for spending three quarters of last session actually cleaning up that cannon and getting it ready. Yeah. And now you're upset and disappointed in yourself that you didn't get a chance to paint it in between then and now in those seven days, right? That's it. When obviously you should have said that you were saving the painting of the cannon for this stream. Yeah, this it, you'll you, <laughs> you'll figure out very quickly. I'm not in marketing. Neither am I, but you know, <laughs> I'm just I'm not talking from a marketing standpoint. Don't don't do yourself a disservice, Dan. Nah. You're a good bloke. Pretty sore and tired, bloke. To be honest. <laughs> Well, aren't we all? <laughs> oh, yeah. Still, progress is being made, so it's not like we're standing still. This is a good thing. I mean, this morning's run, because last night I went and got the timber to make the cupboard doors. And I got the hinges, and I got the magnetic catches, and that was all really wonderful. And I got home and I went, have you got screws? Hmm. No. So. I mean, I've got plenty of screws to screw them to the benches, just none that would have been appropriate to screw the hinges to the doors. There would have been 20 millimeters worth of screws sticking out the front side of the door which is even in a shop that doesn't really believe in ohs is probably not ohs have you got an angle grinder i have Jeez. have you seen have you seen the da the damage an angle grinder will do to a wooden door if you slip yes i have <laughs> I'm not the neatest. Have you seen the damage people. that they do to people? <laughs> oh yeah. Again, yes, yes we yeah. have. <laughs> They're very neat things. The modern ones with batteries and all that kind of stuff. Very neat things. I managed to cut a circular hole in the wall of the garage with it. When I say circular, obviously, I mean relatively circular. Intentionally, yeah. Just making sure. 
If it was an accident, it wouldn't have been circular in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's for the primary venting. Oh, uh, yeah. Because we have things like spray booths and laser cutters and things like that. And I was lying awake from two o'clock when I got up to take the dog out because the dog was whining to go to the toilet uh, till about four o'clock trying to figure out the exact placement of things like the carbon filter for the laser cutter the water tank for the laser cutter the routing of the various air channels for the exhaust on the laser cutter and the exhaust on the spray booth and how all of that was going to interact and where I was going to be able to put the the water tank and the carbon filter so that I could get to them and replace the water and the carbon in the future so they weren't behind screwed in panels etc etc the things the brain likes to chew over when it can't go back to sleep At least it's productive thought. Yes. If I'd had an extra five, well, if I'd been a bit five, five minutes quicker with my run to the hardware store this morning, I may have been able to measure some of those bits and pieces just mentioned and confirm whether or not they'd go where I want them to go. But sadly, I do tend to wander around that hardware store like a little lost duck on occasion. They design them that way. Yes. In fact, I think they encourage it. Also, yes. Mm. But I learnt that I can get 1800 millimeter long panels of chipboard into the car, albeit not comfortably. What I really wanted was I really wanted. 900 by 600s failing that 900 by 1200s do you think you can get that in chipboard no it has to be 1800 by 600 typical typical never the size you want <laughs> Never the size you want. I suppose my fingers are in the way of the video at the moment. Uh, only a little bit when you're hanging straight down like that. But, you know, this contrast paint goes on really quick, so don't stress about it too much. Yeah. So how was your week? Um... Uh... Yeah, I guess. Nothing notable happened, really. Mm. Another week down. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Speaking of weeks down, have you had a look on, ahead on the calendar? I have. But not at any specific dates and what day they fall on. There are a lot of Saturdays in the future. There are. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering where you're going with this. Oh, nowhere on camera. Nowhere on stream. Okay. Just look at your upcoming Saturdays and think about it. <laughs> are you telling me to get my shit together? Well, I know you bought your Christmas presents early. Oh, yeah. No. Well, um, the ones I haven't bought will be electronic. And the ones I have bought are already here. They're actually within sort of reaching or kicking distance. They just need to be wrapped. So... That at least is out of the way.
I can't believe how fast this year has gone. Yeah. Neither can I. Even with all of the everything, this year has gone by incredibly quickly. Mm hmm. I had a real. real mixed emotion moment on Thursday. They do a. A monthly town hall in the company I work for and this monthly town hall they announced with glee the return to the office. Better get your shirt built. Mm -hmm. Oh look, I've missed a bit. I'm actually kind of surprised that your company is interested in returning to the office. I would have thought they would rather save money on not having a lease because you can do all your work remotely anyway. Well, it's an interesting thing because I work for a biomedical instrument manufacturer. We actually have the assembly line in the country, in, in well, like on the facility I work at normally is the production line for three or four different medical instruments so um, it's a, it's an assembly line it's not a manufacturing line but um, there are very good reasons for people to be on site um, and because we're considered an essential essential industry I think I think that's the right term um, there have been people working in the office for a considerable amount of time and what they're actually talking about is they're actually talking about um, I'm trying to remember the term I'm probably going to get this wrong but it's uh, one day a week that is set aside for the whole team to come into the office to be co-located for that one day so work remotely four days a week you work in the office one day a week and that that day a week is organized with your team so that the entire team is co-located on that day i can't remember the term they used but Which Isn't is your team spread to the four winds? Well, it's interesting because my team at the moment consists of, theoretically consists of myself and Clee, and... Exactly my point. <laughs> yeah, have, having him in the office is a no-go anyway, um, so I'm not entirely sure whether that's going to work, but more people will come on next year. Um... It's a very small team, very fledgling team, very brand new thing. Missed another bit. There you go. I don't think I've seen that particular shade before. Uh, you will have, because that's the Black Templar. That's if the the two contrast paints that are closest to empty are the Black Templar and the Apothecary White, for very good reasons. White contrast paint seems like it defeats the purpose. That's because I white's just, aren't I just. white. Yes, I just. Yes, I just. Let me show you my stormtroopers. I've seen your stormtroopers. They're very good. Have you? Oh, you've been trolling through my Instagram stuff. No, you sent them to me special. No, did I? You did. You did. I have the memory of the goldfish that died yesterday or the day before. Um, a black. But I don't want a black black. I want a nearly black oh that's a grey iron warriors black grey black grey that's 
just black. Let's try the black grey. Never been used before by the feel of it. Do I want that one? Probably not. I want this one. You know that thing about not being organised. So I got the skeleton of a shelf in yesterday. When I say the skeleton, it's because its skin didn't arrive. Still waiting on the plywood. Not even a phone call to tell me when they might deliver it. So, that'll be next week sometime. I hope. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yes, I've had a couple of deliveries that ever since we ticked over into December, um, the, del the, the deliveries haven't been going as planned. No. Nothing as grand as plywood, but yeah, everything. When like did... even at the shop as well as at home. Yeah, when did plywood become grand, though? That's um, overstating it somewhat. No, grand in size then yeah. about yeah. that yeah grand grand grande grande grosser <laughs> <laughs> yes grosser but yeah everything that i've had or supposed to have had on ever since first of december has been pushed off for a day despite mm -hmm. being on board for delivery or scheduled uh, to show up I'm yeah. like bugger yeah. I really needed those coffee filters mm. I, can't, I, I needed them this week I don't need them next week well I'll need them next week but I needed them this week yes and, and need is in quotes and underscored oh yeah mm -hmm. so Fair cop, right? Our our local parcel delivery guy has been picking parcels up at five PM and delivering them somewhere between eight PM and nine PM. I mean he's working. There's no two ways about it. I said to him when he was dropping something off the other day, I said, you're working some horrendous hours. And he said, yeah, we are super busy. So. I'll pay that for us post. Mm. Like, you know, uh, despite all of our gripes and complaints, Oz post is a very good postal service. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at you, fast ways couriers. Oh, oh, and I'm oh. looking at you, the three times a week scheduled truck for the store. Yeah. And there was something else as well that I've forgotten. Oh, it was the uh, the delivery from RPE. Yeah. So that was I was supposed. And that was a day late. Well, that was because of the rain. Right. But it was. I think we got 50 mil of rain that day. Wow. So the bloke, understandably, and he's a good bloke. Um, his name is Dan, actually. There you go. Um, yes, I understand not wanting to get out, but he didn't leave a card. Mm. And so someone from the local local PO um, came around the next morning in the driving rain and dropped cards, but didn't update any of the online tracking. Right. So I only noticed the card in, in the letterbox saying, come pick up the stuff, as I was going out the door in the driving rain to take out the rubbish bins. Right. <laughs> and I was like, ah, shit, now I've got to get to the post office in the driving rain. Which I did. Mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, I got the stuff. <laughs> It just made for a better story to tell it that the miniatures arrived in the letterbox in safe and intact condition and not soaking wet. Mm -hmm. Because who wants to be negative in the in the face world? Face world. The in face, face world. Face, face world book <laughs> thing. 
Face World Demon Demon Place. Demon Book. <laughs> Face World Demon Book. <laughs> <laughs> I have not had enough coffee for this. Face Demon Book World? Yeah, there's something in there. That sounds like an occultist sort of literary establishment. Would you be surprised at the number of occultist type people I have to knock back requests to join the Demon World group? Um, yeah, I didn't realise that you were actively advertising. <laughs> or are you not? <laughs> well, I'm not. They've, they're finding the group and they're applying to join and I'm looking at the, the all of the other groups that they're part of and thinking... Oh, they've got the wrong end of the stick. Yes. I'm with you now. Yeah, I've definitely not had enough coffee. Now you make it sound like we're some sort of secret sinister cabal. We are. It's just not very secret. <laughs> or sinister. <laughs> Oh. Uh, you're not left handed? Um, no. Oh, okay. Sinister. Mm hmm. That's all it means. Yes, I know. I just never learnt what the word for right handed was. Correct. Is it actually? I, I don't know. know. Latin, no, cool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm reasonably sure you have a connection to the internet. I'm reasonably sure my hands are covered in boot polish. Oh, no. I know, right? I'm going to have to train you how to search the internet with your nose. So that you can boot polish at the same time. Just let me roll my face over this keyboard. <laughs> oh, that would only be funny if they were MX Cherry Blues. They make this really nice rolling, clacking sound. These wheel spokes are remarkably tedious. Just another bit. Dexter. Dexter. There you go. Dexterous. Yeah, it makes sense. So what's Poindexter then? Always right. I think it's just a character Maybe. name, isn't it? Isn't Probably. it just a character name? That's how Dexter Holland got his name. It's a smart cookie. Still is a smart cookie. And a very insightful individual. Speaking of insightful individuals, mm. how the devil are you? <laughs> That's the best I've got. Sorry. <laughs> um, I really don't know how to answer that because of the, the positive comment you made before. How do I stay positive and describe how I'm actually feeling at the moment? Oh, cover it with a Why? joke. Cover it with a joke, maybe. And suggest you're only as old as you feel. 
So today I'm only 170. That's pretty good. I tend to lean into the only as old as the woman you're feeling. Right. Well, that would make me significantly younger than how I feel. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good joke. Mm hmm. And yes, I realise it doesn't have to be a woman for the joke to work. It can be whatever you like. Whatever your preference is, anyone out there. Mm -hmm. It's just, I know Dan, and I know what Dan is like. And I know what Dan likes. I have a motorcycle named Snatch. Go figure. Good movie. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what YouTube auto subs do to this conversation. <laughs> Seriously, people, mm -hmm. turn them on. They're very, very entertaining. They're as entertaining as we are. Maybe more so <laughs> if you like weird, surreal comedy. Sorry to talk you down a little bit there, Dan, but you know, <laughs> some things need to be said. I'm all about the weird, the weird, surreal comedy. I'm also all about the really numb hand. What's with that? For me, that I get that most of the time through the night. I lay on my, sh I sleep on my shoulders, mm. basically. And yes, this morning uh, in particular, it was very, very bad. Mm. So just, uh, and I couldn't feel either of my arms. And I'm only sleeping on the one shoulder, so why are both arms dead? I don't understand how that's supposed to work. Mm. Something to do with compressed nerves or something. Oh, maybe sure. I need a. Maybe I need to be stretched out on a rack. <laughs> not not to you know torture extent but to unkink the spine a little I'm starting to think going to bed is a torture event it oh. can be if you've got a crap mattress oh no I have an incredibly expensive mattress I just have an incredibly ruined body I was going to make the quip too that this is the hand that's attached to the arm that has two arteries. So it shouldn't be a blood flow issue. The other one's not numb. What did you do in this live stream, Dan? I painted one wheel. You painted the cannonballs to completion. Not quite. They need a dry brush and a wash. Not in that order. They're table ready and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys I follow on Instagram, his moniker is three colours painted. I'm like, that's a very, a very good joke. Because that's what it used to have to be. If you wanted to play in a tournament, a workshop tournament, your army, every figure in your army had to have at least three colours on it. I don't know where somebody came up with that rule, but it was at least three colours. So it's like... To sell paint, of course. Possibly. So people would just go out I and buy... Please. They'd just go out and buy a coloured spray paint and they'd paint them... Spray paint them all one colour. Then... I don't know, weapons would be another colour and shields would be a different colour and that would be it. So it was like kind of playing against a Stratego set. But that was the rule. You had to have at least three colours on them.
I saw another post which I thought was very amusing. It might have been the week gone, might have been the week prior, but it was a post from Games Workshop themselves, which was a gentle reminder to the community that the background for Warhammer 40,000 is satire. It shouldn't be taken seriously. And shouldn't and the Imperium of Man should not be held up in, as an example of any kind of desirable future. And I'm like, I can understand them putting that out actually because of some of the people I know. Yeah, but that's like, <sighs> I get baffled when I see that sort of thing. It's so like. Who could possibly imagine that this is something that they're suggesting that we should be going towards? I think you'll find it is the literal exact opposite. Mm -hmm. And that it is Twitter lefties who are uh, arcing up. Right, okay. Because that's what I was referring to. I know some really, really toxic far left individuals who would you know make well Stalin was fairly right leaning but you know <laughs> extreme 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 far left people mm -hmm. and very toxically so and I've seen them talk about 40k <laughs> right okay and I think to me in my experience that Games Workshop posting would have been a, yeah, by the way, you guys, settle down. Mm -hmm. We're not going to rewrite 40 years of... God, it's been 40 years, hasn't it? It has. We're not going to rewrite 40 years of stuff um, to make the world a, a safe space for a game you don't even play. Yeah. Some people's fun is just simply ruining other people's fun. There are a lot of them out there. Mm. Now, I say all that not actually having looked at the post or looked at what has brought this up. It, that is just my extreme sneaking suspicion. Mm. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the post that brought it up either, but I... And I, I didn't see Workshop's post themselves, or somebody else had reposted it. And I think it was Ash Barker from Gorilla Miniature Games that reposted it. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, another swig of caffeine, and then on to wheel number two. Well, do you mind if I take a sweet caffeine as well? I do not. I do not. Not at all. Then I will be back very shortly.
That's a very oddly shaped wheel. It is. Reminds me of that bit from Futurama. I know you're not a huge Simpsons fan. Did you ever see Futurama? Yeah, a few episodes. Alright, well, there was one where... Oh, I got disconnected there some for some reason. Wow. Mm. Maybe they don't want me talking about Futurama. <laughs> So as I was going to say, there was an episode of Futurama in which all of the robots that do everything for everyone basically rebel against humanity. Mm -hmm. And society immediately collapses into a, <laughs> yeah. a wasteland with um, no idea on how to do anything. Yep. And the main characters need to go from one side of New York to the other, a distance of some miles. How will we get there with without hovering? Yeah. We need the robot to hover, etc., etc. And Fry, the man from the past, says, Oh, there was this really famous invention, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Ruth Gordon had one. The wheel! You know, eureka moment. Yeah. And then he sets about building a pair of wheels to attach to a cart. Which are oval shaped. Right. Okay. And offset. Yeah. So it's up on one side and then down mm. and up and down. And, like... and then one of the future people speaks up and it's like, wouldn't this work better if they were out? And he says, shut up, it's my invention, I'll make it how I want. <laughs> Yeah. And that is what the wheel you are working on reminded me of. Yep. Yeah, this one wouldn't rotate very well. It's your cannon. Build it how you want. That's right. Just pausing to let the numbness dissipate. Which is fair. My hands aren't loving life at the moment. You've put them to a lot of work. Mm-hmm. They've taken a fair kicking in the last month or so. Bruises and cuts and pinches and jams and at least it's still got them all yep one of my favorite quips is uh, when counting something mm -hmm. as much uh, as many as on a carpenter's hands. <laughs> it's not a baker's dozen, it's a carpenter's ten. What's a carpenter's ten? Seven? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a, oh, I constantly get videos into my Facebook feed from Crafty Panda. And um, along with those... Uh, it decides it likes to show me uh, woodworking videos and there's this one particular guy who, who does these woodworking videos say, hey you should try this this is a really neat sort of a thing and he's missing the tips of two fingers and he's using band saws and um, circular saws and all that kind of stuff and the comment section is usually gold it's usually better than the video itself It's like, <clears throat> so yeah. I did have an interesting moment yesterday morning. One of those, it was a reminder moment. And the reminder moment was 
these things are dangerous you should treat them with respect because the um, chop saw grabbed and flung a chunk of wood I was cutting a an angle cut in a piece of 70 by 35 and it just grabbed the the off-cut chunk and just flung it and broke a piece out of the blade guard and rang the whole rang the blade like a bell but, uh, it's like yep there's my reminder this week that this thing shouldn't be taken for granted that's yeah, please be careful, Dan. Oh, I am. <laughs> Trust me, around <laughs> around spinning things, metal things, and everything like I am super careful. Um, that one has a it has a drop lock on it, so you need to thumb a catch to actually release the blade. So, you know. Yeah. Okay, but your off cut might have. Uh belted you or something else or someone that you loved yep could have g'day james how are you muted i see silent that's unusual oh audio problems mm. no doubt those were words of wisdom from the man they would have been but, uh, We'll never hear them. Oh well. So yeah, the table saw always has a blade guard on it. I don't care what I'm doing. It always has a blade guard on it. Um, Jigsaw is the same. You know, it's... Words of wisdom followed by expletives. Actually. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Please repeat the words of wisdom. Please don't repeat the expletives. Oh, no, there were no words of wisdom. It was just how you're doing. All right. I thought I, I thought I had my settings set, but apparently I didn't. Well, so you, you, you did. You just didn't have the right one set. <laughs> um, I'm so well, I had funny. I had it set to my camera, which has got a... Yeah. supposed to have a microphone and stuff in it, but for whatever reason, it, it wasn't working. Mm. But then again... Yeah, it's been one of those one of those days with lots of devices. So maybe I just needed to reboot. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, headphones, good old reliable wired headphones. Oh, now you say that. You say that. We all got new laptops. Well, when I say we all got new laptops, I got a new laptop. Another guy got a new laptop. And for whatever reason... The software that detects that you plug a three and a half millimeter jack into the three and a half millimeter jack port doesn't work. So you can't use ordinary three and a half millimeter wired headphones on these computers. You have to go and get a USB one. Oh, that's a left. Very, very annoying. That's the lap laptop design? Preventing that? I don't know. It's a software combination. I, I spent a couple of days trying to figure it out and gave up in the end. Went and got myself a set of USB headphones. Weird. Yes. I mean, I used to have some issues on my um, on another Windows laptop, but I never had any issues with, with my Dell. Mm -hmm. but anyway. Well, these are Dells. Uh, maybe these I've got to mess it up. Well, it is Dell. It's only one letter away from hell, so there you go. It is. There's your words of wisdom. How's your slow cooking going, James? Oh, you're on my Facebook. You know how my slow cooking's going. Did you Did you not catch my uh, slow cooker ch chicken I, I, from the other night? I did, but the listeners may not be aware of your Facebook. Oh, and nor should they be. <laughs> 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 uh. Okay, next question. How are the pigs? <laughs> Still alive. Still alive. Sadly. Sadly, not not in my freezer. I've got... I've been buying frozen turkeys, though, because um, 
turkey over here is uh, now that turkey day's over is uh, fifty nine cents a pound. Right. So I can go and buy a what was a. Hey, it's turkey day, so we're going to stiff you for thirty odd bucks for a turkey mm -hmm. for like ten bucks, mm -hmm. and I end up with a twenty pound turkey. So I've got three of those in the freezer. Okay. <laughs> so what you should really do is celebrate Thanksgiving on December twenty fourth. And yep. and it would be a be lot day, cheaper, <laughs> a it's lot cheaper. Day all over again. <laughs> and I went and I went and bought a nice roaster separately for it. Yeah, tried that out and it came out pretty good. Photos on my Facebook for those that are on my Facebook. Yeah, and those who aren't, you're obviously not privileged. So <laughs> terrible. Bad luck. You're out of luck. Bad luck. Of my keto cooking, it's all good. As it turned, slowly, tra slowly transitioning to carnivore diet, so we're getting there. Yeah, right. That was my default state. Carnivore. Yeah, I've never liked vegetables. Never. I eat them, but I don't like them. You know, somebody says, "What's your favourite vegetable?" I go, "I don't have a favourite. I have a least unfavourite." Ooh. Well, there's a book. Can I actually uh, even answer that question? What is your least unfavorite vegetable, Dan? I don't know. Ooh, least unfavorite vegetable. Mm. Yeah. It'd have to be something between broccoli and cauliflower, but even so. That kid who used to bully you around when you were when you were at school was he your least unfavorite vegetable? Uh, you're talking about my sister. Oh, sorry. She was the biggest bully in my life. That's your older sister, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Five years older. Yeah, yeah there you go. Sisters are cruel, cruel things. Yes. Even when they are well adjusted. And I wouldn't aim that particular moniker at mine. Still, she has her life. She's living her life according to how she wants to live it. That's fine by me. It doesn't involve me. It's even more fine. And Maddie, by me. are you still are you still free radioing Earthdawn? Or eighteen seventy nine? Yes. Yes, I am. You had episodes through to Christmas. Do you have now have episodes through to the new year? I have episodes through to the twenty third of January. Very nice. I'm now super behind. That's alright, you can always catch up. I will. I can listen to them faster than you can produce them, I think. Well, that's tr that would... You know, I'd be worried if you could. <laughs> yeah, right. The amount of time it takes to produce them. <laughs> yeah. And effort. Everybody, go listen. Radio Free Earth Dawn, 1879 campaign. It's a hoot. Oh, we were meant to play on Wednesday, but um, various things didn't uh, didn't allow for it. Lack of running water. That was actually the last thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a bunch of other stuff in between. Well, there were some other other reasons that I was giving because I had totally forgotten about the lack of running water. Mm. This is uh, because they've shut the water off, or you've got a pipe uh, problem, or uh, there was some on... track, track water pipes service oh. the street. So there was a, a crew with excavators digging them up, <laughs> uh, starting at game o'clock. I'm like, yeah. oh shit, that's yeah. right, the water's off. I'm glad I had a shower this morning because <laughs> I couldn't get one otherwise. first world problems right That's thing running water oh my god where's mm -hmm. it gone however will i live i have no well <laughs> uh. oh boy so now we're into lack of well jokes well 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 
three holes in the ground. Holes in the ground, full of water. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> If I remember right, is that Spike Milligan? I can't remember where I first heard that. Uh, it sounded my, like my little rendition was I, I blame James Hetfield for because that was on the outtakes of the load and I think it was the load sessions. <coughs> he starts singing that. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion that it actually originates with the Goon Show. But yeah, probably. Probably. It's an old joke I've known forever. Since yeah. I'm older than you are. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <saying something. laughs> Dinosaurs roaming the earth. And... Uh, we've already covered that ground this morning, James. I'm only 170th um, this morning. And dog ears, or? No, this is just you're only as old as you feel. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a few other things I could add to that, but of course, this is a public broadcast. So <laughs> Moving <happening>. on. <laughs> no, to see here. Just painting. I think Speaking I which, added those already, painting? anyway. You probably <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> you probably did. Yeah. Right. Empire. That looks like a cannon. It is a yep. cannon. But it is not Empire anymore. Well, technically, it is until I get 4th edition added. Ah, uh, oh, too many damn things to do. Got to finish that workshop first. Then I can get back to all of the other things I've been putting on hold and try and catch up with. Oh, I feel it's a tough so... life, I tell you. It's been a rough month, that's for sure. Yeah, job hunting sucks. Oh, you are actually actively job hunting now. Yeah. Mm. My commiserations. It's all right. Week number three. Just had my first interview today, so. Mm. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Hope it goes well. I got a call back on Tuesday for the second one, so. There you go. Hopefully, fingers and toes. We'll see. Somebody I'm going to ramp up in skill set though, because it's moving into data analytics. So, well, that's not a bad analytics. thing, is it? No, it's not. It's not. It'll just be weird having an interesting job for once. <laughs> well, I say this in comparison to what I have been doing during COVID lockdowns. Right. Think the projects basically getting delayed and delayed after we finished them off yeah was literally punching the button every five minutes to stop the screensaver from coming on oh come on you can do better no, than serious. that no, you can no, do I'm better serious. than that well i can do better than that i mean anyone can do better than that it's fine well there are people who would go well that's that sounds like the world's easiest job in the world and and, and theoretically it probably is close to that but it's not that, it's the boredom. It's, it's the incessant it's... tedium that gets to you after a while. That's right. And I thought I'd be clever and stick a utility on that just simulates a mouse movement every <laughs> couple of minutes. But of course, they don't meet security requirements for work, so... <laughs> well, they haven't pinged me for the one I've installed yet. <laughs> 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 well, we'll edit that out of the broadcast. <laughs> Being a software engineer has its privileges because you've got to write code, you need administrative access to your machine. <laughs> so. That's exactly right. Mm. Yep. And it's just a case of how judicious the company is and running. Uh, uh, oh, they're getting more and more and more strict about that kind of stuff. They've got anti malware all over the thing. And, you know, if it, if it triggers an anti malware. Uh, event shall we say a dim view is taken that is correct and that's actually fair enough it is today's. it is it is for sure there was a big um big exchange got a a bunch of phishing emails it was probably eight or nine in a row um overnight night before last 
And then there was this email immediately after from corporate IT going, don't click those links. And then they sent it again about 10 minutes later going, just repeating, don't click those links. If you have, <laughs> tell us now. Yep. Yep. Have you got one of those handy report phishing buttons? Yeah. On your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on your outlook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just click that seven or eight times or whatever, and the problem goes away for now. The best part about it is when you get those you get those sneaky, suspicious emails, and you're looking at that going, this is, this is half legitimate, but it's only half legitimate. So you, you slap the report phishing button anyway, and then you get the pop-up that says, congratulations, this message was part of our immersive anti-malware education program, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, good. I've passed your Turing test again. So should I be opening this email that says million dollar Radio Free Earth Dawn giveaway? <laughs> or should I... <laughs> who, I mean, if I had I... a million bucks to give away... <laughs> well, that that would be a lot more than a million dollars, yeah. Yeah, maybe I should leave that joke for when Ross turns up about how to make a million bucks with a gaming company. It's to start with 10 million. Yep. Yeah. Used to be start with two, but I think 10 is more accurate. Mm, yeah. Well, the the extra 8 million at the moment is just for shipping. Yep. Shipping is nuts. <clears throat> Print on demand. <clears throat> anyway. The cost of timber. My goodness. Like, it's tripled. Lumber prices are up 1,600% over here. Yeah. It's like... From from pre-COVID. Uh, yeah. Uh, Actually, that's... The UN put out something the other day saying the uh, global food price index went up 26.7%. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Fuck. That's a Thanks, lot. Thanks, Biden. That's a lot. And here you are getting your turkey for 10 cents a pound. Well, it, I went That's shopping inflated for too. Like, <laughs> I went, uh, probably, uh, it's, well, who knows. Um, I mean, turkey, like like I said, you know, the, the turkey's like normally 32, 33 bucks. So you divide that by 20 pound and you kind of get the, the price per. But compared to the price of like beef, and pork mm -hmm. pork is normally relatively inexpensive all things considered but that's up as well and chicken and oh man that's just insane at the moment mm -hmm. so everything is basically up across the board um which makes me glad obviously that i've got livestock but the um yeah but but turkey for whatever reason even though they had like a turkey shortage this year because they couldn't get staff in to help um um, there, there seems to be a lot of them out there. Maybe it's just people couldn't afford it this year. I know there was a kind of a move to go, whoa, don't do that because it's supporting colonialism and the yada, yada, yada. Oh, um, really? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I kid you not. Um, it's like on Australia Day. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's become I mean, Apology it's Day. It's kangaroo on Australia Day. It's, it's tradition, isn't it? Well, Get yeah. A little bit of... Some jumping, jumping rat. A little bit of Roo, a little bit of Amy. Why not? Kangaroos because, eating, so. Yeah, but emu isn't. It gives you the runs. <laughs> well, <it's>, seriously, <laughs> if, if you are not accustomed to eating emu, it gives you diarrhea. <laughs> I'm sorry. That that was very funny on a lot of levels, Manny. It's got a lot of oil in the meat, I think. Yeah. It is. It's extremely, extremely greasy and fatty. Yeah. yeah kind of like mutton, wool... Uh, wool sheep or the lanolin gets in and taints it so mm. but those those chicken thighs I cooked the other day came out pretty good so very easy recipes though that casserole came out even better but it's got a vegetable in it so it doesn't mm. really yeah but you wouldn't know Dan uh, you, you and your, your damn zucchinis 
Oh, no, no, this was a cauliflower, so it doesn't really have any mm. flavor at all. And no, it's roasted right. with garlic, so, you know. It, so now it does have flavor. Yeah. Yeah. It's got flavor and it's got cheese sauce all around it. So. Well, Joe hides um, zucchini in just about everything. You can. Yeah. Zucchini is a great stealth vegetable. Yeah. Um, all those vegetables just don't really have much in the way of flavor. They're, they're, they're designed to, or they're not designed, but they're basically easy to add to things. Get some fiber, better fiber. I like fiber. Going, like going back to that, that saying either. Going back to that colonial thing. Because I can't let an opportunity for another tail pass. Uh, I got taken to task. Um, we were doing this speed of trust workshop, and the the exercise was to name someone that you know or someone that you know of who you consider to be uh, of uh, someone that you trust to to have the attributes of a person that inspires trust in you. Something along the lines. So, so I said Nelson Mandela. You know, he's, he's a man who walked his talk. From what I know about him. Right? I haven't studied the guy's life in any particular yeah, I depth. Won't, but I, won't, I, won't, I won't expand on that, but yep. Yeah, enough. yeah. So, to which immediately... The only South African in the course jumped in and jumped down my throat and said, basically, how dare you mention Nelson Mandela in one breath without mentioning F.W. de Klerk in the other. So we thought that's so, right. Yeah. So he, she, he's they, absolutely they right obviously got the wrong sorry. idea. Because you only know what you know Mm -hmm. And the question isn't about them. The person who you basically yeah. are putting forward as someone who you yeah. think is an example of, of trust. Not The question wasn't, is, does anybody else in the room see this person as an object of trust? Yeah, I'm right. On that? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so, so they're totally out of line. But I did a little bit of Googling. Well, the, the conversation moved on, right? I did a little bit of Googling and onto Wikipedia and all that kind of stuff. And I did read about the guy, and there is some merit there, right? He really was the architect of dismantling apartheid in South Africa. And so, you know, kudos to him. He, he is a good guy. He did good things. He should be recognised. But just exactly as you said, James, that wasn't the question in the... The, the you know the context of that particular uh, exercise in that particular course, what it actually illustrated to me was more about the person that leapt in with that than it was about anything about Mandela in particular. Right. There's a certain set of people. I'm very, very careful here. There's a certain set of people who are insecure about their part in that regime, either actively or passively. Anyhow, moving on. Sorry, Matty, you were going to say that... Yes. I was going to say that I perfectly understand how that person feels and not for the reason that you think. Yeah. More, but more from a here's what all you foreigners think about our glorious country and I am just so sick of, you know, you just spouting off the one name instead of, you know, actually knowing something about it yeah. and knowing that de Klerk was, you know, actually the real man for that well, yeah. yeah look Mandela is the sore spot for me well and I think I'd better leave it at that yeah maybe to me it's a, to me it's a case however of not a lot of people 
are really into history. Yes. And if you are, and if you are a passingly into history, then you, you kind of read the the casual history, or I'm going to say mm-hmm. the Wikipedia history, okay, which is not actually strictly accurate because Wikipedia does go into detail and in, in places, but it, it's like in a kind places. of a it's gloss the... gloss down, warm fuzzy. Well, here's here's some some stuff, but really you've got to like burrow into into a lot of these are people it's about like saying you know oh my god gandhi is just the best person it was like ever oh my god he was an architect and all the rest of it and sure you'd probably be for the most part most people who know gandhi know of the stuff but they don't know about all the other stuff mm-hmm. you know that basically led to where where he ended up um and, and there are lots of examples of that. Or well, people who are swept under the rug because, you know, they were the primary movers and shakers, but they didn't quite have the same um, charisma or, mm, yeah. or primary following. Any other number of examples, I'm kind of moving into rant zone here. But the point is, is largely, you know, that that old adage history is written by, by the winners. I think um, that's true to a point. But I think that there's a lot of ignorance when it comes to history. I think people are just prepared to take a lot of stuff on face value yeah. that are bothered to actually dig a little deeper. Bit and the and particularly, it. particularly about the dismantling of undesirable regimes. Particularly, absolutely. There's always a populist history that a lot of people don't dig below, and I mean, fair enough. Um, Mandela was who Mandela was. I don't necessarily suggest he was perfect. I don't suggest he was the architect of anything or everything, but he was a symbol, rightly or wrongly. But then again, in that that exercise that you were referring to, that was the person that came to mind as being your particular, you know, hey, I think this person's trustworthy. Yeah. In spite, in spite, Trump is trustworthy. In spite, inspires trust. I think was more the case. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, you're right. That was your original question. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm a I'm a troublemaker. Sorry, I, I like steering pots. So. Fair enough. So the other example that he gave was Barack Obama. <laughs> is this the same bloke? <laughs> <laughs> the same South African? No, or that was that, you? that was me. That was the other example I gave was Barack Obama. That of all of the Fair that enough. of all okay. of the American presidents in the last fifty years, the one that inspired the most trust would have been Obama. But understanding, of course, that he still presided over a country that was virtually divided down the middle. You know? I really I'm just going to take my hand away from the push to talk button for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, what's what's fine. really but what's really interesting is is that if you if you again and and not not going any deeper than the surface, right? This isn't I don't have an in depth knowledge of America, American politics, or anything like that. This is purely the TLDR view of the world, and maybe that's dangerous. Maybe it isn't. It seems to be the view that everybody seems to go on. But anyhow. The one that you are told to hold, otherwise you're an evil, wicked person. Possibly, although I don't tend to subscribe to that terribly much. Um, As you shouldn't, but I, that I, is it. I, I, I'm amusing myself with the ponderings that arguably arguably and i mean he's been deified so it's a little bit difficult to really know but arguably lincoln was one of the best presidents the u.s has had you know affected real change reassembled the union blah 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 was killed for his efforts um Prosecuted the American Civil War for the first couple of years without congressional approval, so was willing to step outside the law to to do what he thought he needed to do. Um, made massive changes to the country. Well, um, first of all, his election divided the country so badly that it uh, tore itself apart. 
prosecuted a civil war without congressional approval, um, enacted all kinds of bills, did all kinds of things, did the necessary, and at the end of it turns out to be a hero in most people's eyes. Certainly there's a, <coughs> a subset of the country that don't necessarily think all that highly of him, which is fine. But if you compare that to Donald Trump and you go, hmm, Mm. Now all of a sudden, arguably one of your best presidents isn't all that different to arguably one of your worst. So what does that say? Politicians are a waste of space. <laughs> are they a necessary evil? The evil part I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> The, the necessary I uh, vacillate, <laughs> and 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 I am a huge proponent of benevolent dictatorship as the ultimate form of of, of government. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's take in a little little aside here. I was having a conversation with a guy I worked with a long time ago, and we were talking about eugenics. And I was talking about the fact that, that in the early 20th century, eugenics was proposed as a, a, as a serious mechanism by which uh, to enact societal control. And I said to him, the problem with eugenics is who gets to decide? And his immediate answer was, well, I do. I'm like, hmm. The likelihood of that is very low. <laughs> so, yeah. The benevolent dictator, it it's usually works for a generation. It doesn't work after that. Because it, it loses well, benevolenceness. Yeah, power power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So that's yeah. I I'm not saying that it's actually a mechanism that, that should be employed, but um I kind of hark back to Julius Caesar as as a personal icon, um, but he was a nutbag. Oh yeah, he was a complete dick. But the um, and nasty as all get out. Oh yeah, and self congratulatory and self. Uh, 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 he he a was a lot wrong with the actual guy, but he believed in the greatness of Rome and Wait. making Rome better. <laughs> he tore it apart to do it. Oh yeah. Literally. You gotta break you gotta break break something if you're gonna re build it to make it better, right? Who build so, it back better, isn't that isn't that what, what we're looking at at the moment? <laughs> Who is better? Caesar uh, like, like like Julius or Augustus? Three trillion dollars. Who is better? Julius or Augustus? Yeah. Hmm <sighs> that's actually a pretty tough one. Um because I like Augustus as well. Augustus was the man, as far as I'm concerned. Right? Ju Julius was a disruptive influence. Augustus was a constructive influence. But he was still not a nice guy. Well, this is true. He almost didn't quite make it. But he he the, uh, wasn't a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. No. Yeah. Very, very few of them were because, well, that was if you were a nice guy, you just didn't survive. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the bottom line. Uh, uh, Roman politics at the time involved killing your opponents yep. or your opponent's followers. So, anyhow, we the world has moved on. So, yeah, what was a comment but, I heard from someone the other day? It was in an interview I was watching. The guy said, "Yeah, Julius Caesar said, said great, great, at, great at politics, great at war, great at everything else." Lousy at personal security. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had too much trust. He had too much trust. Maddie's gone very silent. I think we've gone into areas he's uncomfortable with. That's all good. I'll I'll I'll, I'll keep a spot for you, Maddie. When I take over the world, it's all. It's all fine. <laughs> Shit, sorry, I just realised that I've had my uh, microphone boom um, up since I brushed my beard. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I've been talking to you, son, just... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
<laughs> so you did a James entry. Pretty much. Do you want to recap what you said? Not really. <laughs> Were there expletives? I think no. I think he said he was going to be my. Um quite happily be my right hand man when I when I take over the world I believe was not that right? Well we were talking about I've, that before. I've got my own plans for being benevolent dictator. Right. Don't we all? Not really. Really? No. I've been a manager yeah. in a corporate environment. I understand what it's like to try and manage people and keep them happy and keep them productive and keep them occupied. Right? Doing That's that first mistake. Doing that with <laughs> five people was hard enough. Trying to do it with 25 million people who all disagree with me and all think that they can do it better, that, there's no joy there. None whatsoever. I can't imagine why anybody would voluntarily try and do that. You see, the, your mistake is in that you're trying to make people happy. Right. People don't want, you know, people don't need things that make them happy. They need things that make them better off even if they don't necessarily feel happy about it. Do, do, do you know, I, th I think it's... Uh, maybe I'm going to get into a lot of trouble here, but I think it's actually... I, I think it, we're already in trouble. In trouble. It is, there's, a, there's, a, there's a baser instinct <laughs> only, there. Only after Ross watches this. <laughs> yeah, there's a baser instinct there, which says that um, a human being just needs to see that he's doing better than the bloke next to him. Yeah, I could certainly see that working. The selfish nature of humanity, basically. Yeah. Well, no, it's not selfish, James. It's insecure. It's insecurity. It comes from, am I a good person? Am I doing the right things? Am I worth something to the world? And we do that by comparing ourselves to the people around us. And we go, in general, if we're doing better than them, we feel good about ourselves. In general, if we're not, we don't. We feel bad about ourselves. Which is fairly sick when you think about it. It is, absolutely. But, you know. It's oh. a good thing we as a species are working so very hard to wipe each other out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That does. That when when the aliens get here nose. in 50,000 years, you know, it'll be sweet. Pretty, <gasps> pretty good. Lush place. and green and filled with animals and. Fifth, it's not going to take 50,000 years. How long? No, 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 how, that's just the recovery. How long does it take? How long does it take, in general, a building to fall down once it becomes neglected? 20, 30 years. Yeah, right. So Depending on your construction. Depending on your construction, the size of the building, etc. Et et yeah, well, a skyscraper. How long before a skyscraper falls down if it's unmaintained? I can't answer that, but there's a great series called ten, Life roughly. After People. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Matty. I reckon 10 years and a skyscraper will come down if it's unmaintained. So you think about that and you think about, hmm. Add a couple of zeros onto that, everything's gone. Now, you can still dig it up and you can find the evidence that it was there, but otherwise it's gone. So, you know, that... That, that whole nuclear holocaust? A thousand years. And everything will be green and covered in trees and whatever. Glowing green. Well, maybe. What's the half-life? Uh, I don't know. It depends on what we're using. Well, that's a really interesting thing because then the the four on the fauna that is radiation resistant or at least capable of producing generations fast enough to deal with it, they'll take over. You know, taxiflora and taxifauna are very very good at inhabiting the planet when the conditions aren't right for anything else. Unless somebody in their infinite wisdom decided to use a cobalt bomb, in which case it's game even over. then. No, but even then. Even then, you're just extending the time frame for how long it takes life to to, to adjust. Like, have you guys looked up the at the the last big extinction event? You know, the the Chicxulub crater in the in Mexico. Tang, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was like 
millions of years ago. So. Yeah, that's right. But how old are all of the species that are currently on the planet? They're all millions of years old. So it didn't take very long for life to turn itself around and pick itself up and go forward again, you know, even in really hostile environments. You see, you've seen those bacteria that only exist in water that is just on the edge of boiling. It's a particular, a particular water and a particular bacteria. It's, life is incredibly tenacious. It's just the life as we know it. You know, the big stuff, the higher order stuff, the mammals and, and all that kind of stuff, they'll go away because they won't be able to, to survive. But something else will come up and evolve to exist in the, the space and it'll move on. I, for one, look forward to our duck overlords. <laughs> Quack. This is why it amuses me when people say they're going to try and save the planet. I'm like, you what? The planet's going to be fine. It's the people that there's a problem with. Oh, but that's heresy, you see. Oh, we're back to the 40k thing again. Well, yeah, I guess. Burn the heretics. <clears throat> us and our circular conversations. Oval. Oval. And offset. Well, humanity is a blip. It's a blip in the, in the planet's timeline. It is. We're not even... We really a, are. Just... We're nothing compared to the planet. Yeah. But ours is the only viewpoint that matters to us. So therefore, we are the most important things. Every story told by humans is about humans for one for one reason. Well, in one aspect or another. Even the people that are trying to save an individual species from extinction. That's not about the individual species. It's about the people. This has turned very depressing. And <laughs> I'm glad I have just opened up a bag of chocolate. <laughs> you can be glad when you've emptied that bag of chocolate. It's a 400 gram bag of chocolate covered... Uh, Chocolate covered honeycomb. Oh. Oh, chocolate, sugar, oh, drool. Sadly, no. <laughs> did, did, I okay. tell you, did I tell you about my trip to Darrell Lee a couple of months ago? Oh, uh, licorice? Oh, no. No, no, no. There's a Darrell Lee factory outlet within walking distance of my house. And we happened to be down there one Saturday morning because I felt like some Rockley Road. Don't ask me why I was having a moment. Anyhow, they had boxes out the front on a pallet of the store, and they said, 10 bucks for the box. And it was a, it was an experiment. Um, it has, it has chunks of honeycomb. Um, it has gummy bears of a particular they're purple what's what's the flavor that's normally associated with purple um black like currant fruit. no black currant grape oh okay yeah. sorry i'm thinking yep. so black currant over here it's grape. yeah right black currant gummy bears um and different chocolate chunks plus sort of an oreo sort of a biscuit swirled through milk chocolate and you you describe this to people and they go oh my god that's disgusting but it's actually really, really good. Um, the salient point being is that I got home and weighed that box because I bought one for ten dollars. It was thirteen and a half kilos. Whoa! It's taken me months, months to eat that. You know, I'd be happy to help. <laughs> I'll send some. I do actually. You can send me some gummy bears. Some bases from you too. Yeah, right. I'm going to get a freeze dryer just to make freeze dried gummy bears. Oh yes. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I really like the sour ones. Is that wrong? No. Although the freeze dryer like puffs them up, 
so that they're kind of you, you take the little gummy bear stick it on the freeze dryer and, and the, they turn into these puffed up gummy bears so you can actually eat a, f a few of them and not feel guilty you know normally you're stuffing your mouth with like handfuls of gummy bears nom 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 yeah but freeze dried you still get all the flavor and, and all the all the gummy bear goodness but they're just bigger like kind of expanded right gummy bears yeah so good so good wow why have i never heard of this before yes and when can i try well that? i I hadn't. We were we were away for that uh, that thing in Tennessee, the the home setting yeah. thing. We were we headed away, and the, the the crowd we were down there with had a freeze dryer because they're freeze drying all their food and stuff, and they were going around handing out these freeze dried gummy bears, which apparently was a bit of a happy accident because they they had they'd picked up a lot of gummy bears. They'd, they'd ordered what what they thought was a carton <laughs> of gummy bears and it turned out to be a pallet <laughs> <Palette>. of, of <laughs> cartons of gummy bears so they've got like more gummy bears than they've got gummy bears till the end of time yeah um and so they were like ah oh, we're experimenting with the freeze dryer for various things um normal foods you know for you know 25 year shelf life and stuff like that you can do whole meals and freeze dryers and stuff it's they're pretty awesome and I thought, well, I'll throw some gummy bears in and see what happens. And these things came out, and they were just like the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> That's great. And so they're now selling freeze dried gummy bears as a sideline project for them and paying off their freeze dryer like that. But they were handing them out to everybody. I was like, what's this? Just try it. It's like, this, this tastes so, so familiar, and the shape looks so familiar, but they're like way bigger. Mm. And it's like, it's what happens to a little standard gummy bear is that expands to about nearly three times the size just with the freeze drying process but you get this amazing gummy bear flavor because the freeze dryer keeps all the flavor in it mm. oh my goodness so good now i'm craving gummy bears <laughs> or oh, in chocolate oh honeycomb i miss honeycomb chocolate that's a particular New Zealand specialty, isn't it? Yeah, the honeycomb lettuce. Mm. Yeah, we've got a we've got a place here in Cincinnati. We're kind of lucky. We've got two of them actually, um, called Jungle Gyms, and it's kind of they're pretty famous throughout America. There's only two two stores, and they're both here in Cincinnati. And the guy has um a, he's got this grocery store, and it's got this massive international food section. Um, so it's got the Australian section. It doesn't have a New Zealand one, sadly, but it, it, occasionally some some Kiwi stuff makes its way there. But I, I I go there every now and again, and you know just to pick up things like you know Jaffers and um, licorice and you know just just stuff. Um, Marmite, not Vegemite. What's wrong with Vegemite? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, made, of, it's made of it's made of it's made of vegetables, isn't it? No, it's not. Vegemite is a yeast extract. It's made of yeah, I beer. Know. I know. I know. It's a yeast extract. Vegemite has, uh, to me anyway, has got like a, a, a tartar flavor. It's it's fine. I'll eat it. Um, but it's got a, like a tartar flavor. I find Marmite's got a kind of a richer, deeper flavor to it. Mm, there's a bone of contention between Maddie and I because I'll eat crumpets with Vegemite and cheese on them grilled. I won't. And he no, would. cheese no, and Vegemite no. should not be mixed. Oh yeah, crumpets. Ta no, taste, no, taste butter and golden syrup. Oh, golden syrup. My goodness, mm. man. How old are you? Older than you remember. <laughs> that is uh, self-evident. Equal view Americans. <laughs> uh, They're not the same thing. I'm sure that few few people would know what golden syrup is over here. Molasses. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like treacle is what it's sold as over there. I've had to convert a couple of recipes for some American friends. It's not the same thing a because golden. we used to have a tin of golden syrup and a tin of treacle on, on the shelf no, 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 at home. No. Light treacle. Yeah, right. Light treacle. Yeah, yeah. Not, not quite the same, but yeah. Oh. Golden syrup dumpling. Oh no! Oh, 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 yes. Yes. Oh, oh yes! This, folks, is why I had a double bypass at forty-five. 
And I, I, I've converted friends over here to um, New Zealand style uh, salad dressing, which I don't know if, it, if this is an Australian recipe or not, but it's it's just basically golden syrup with malt vinegar and mustard powder oh, added to it. That would be powder. so good. It is. You can have it on absolutely everything. It's just like, yeah. But I, I introduced it to friends over here, and they were like, "What is this glorious dressing?" So, mm. well, this is what it is. So that that's a thing in Australia as well. No, if it isn't. We're going to claim that it is, <laughs> yeah, so like it everything good New Zealand. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's a two-way, it's a two-way street. Because <laughs> I made, I made a not, made a, a, not in Christchurch. It isn't. <laughs> oh, no, you're right there. Too. Yeah. Um, I made a pavlova over here as well for um, for a, for a turkey day for some friends in, in Alabama, so that that was a thing. Funniest thing I've ever seen: sign on the bottom of pavlova box. It says "Do not invert." <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> Suck. Too late. Whoops. Uh, Actually, I made I made uh, two of them because I had one of them which was done with uh, just standard whipped cream and um, chocolate, you know, grated chocolate over the top. Strawberries. And the other, oh no, the other one was uh, whipped cream and uh, strawberries. Yeah, right. Yeah. Those appear to be the classic sort of pavlovery type things. Passion you fruit for mine. Love you passion. Fruit. It's not a pavlova unless it's you know just drizzled in passion fruit pulp. There you go. Hard to find that over here. Hard to find that. Oh, you got to grow your own. Yeah, might might need to. Well, we probably will when we go to Tennessee because it'll be, be, climate will be right for it. Yeah, I miss I miss passion fruit. I never like Chinese liked... gooseberries or just gooseberries if you like. I never so... liked the pips in passion fruit. Oh, unless because you're crunching on them, you got to swallow it whole. Right. Don't chew. Just swallow. <laughs> um, let me rephrase that. <laughs> when I can figure out a way to, uh, you know, <laughs> rephrase that. I'm not sure if I should be offended by that or turned on. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Just to, as an aside, I, I didn't read it. It was just the headline, but the headline of the article was something about making a new form of environmentally friendly plastic out of semen. I'm like, hmm, okay. Uh, I assume you're not talking about uh, those people that have enrolled in the Navy. I didn't read the article. It may have been Navy related. We're plumbing new depths here. We are. Absolutely. Because I have, I have, I have stories, but I'm not going to relate them. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, well, Probably I'm, not. I did once come across a cookbook on that subject. A cookbook. Mm. A genuine, honest to God cookbook. Mm. With that as okay. the feature ingredient. Hopefully, from a bull or some kind of similar animal. Or... Uh, no, human. Right. Okay. I think my brain just broke. Thanks, <laughs> Benny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still chortling the fact that you came across a book without us to copy you. Oh God. <laughs> oh no. No. Oh. Ross is probably going to pull this up. Video. So. <laughs> uh, we're all adults. Mm. Is Folks, this is, this is this is what happens when you when you leave grown men <laughs> alone in lockdown for too long. <laughs> I was actually gifted a shirt on that subject just yesterday. It was a picture of a, I guess a a pit bull's face, cartoon style. And mm. I'm left unsupervised, and this is what I'm like. Was the mm -hmm. caption across? I'm like, hmm, okay. Yes, thank you. That uh, perfectly encapsulates me. I think the little old ladies wanted me to wear it to work as mm. part of the uniform. Mm. It was a black shirt. I'm like, yeah, okay.
So you're a black shirt at work. I am. Do I dare link that topically to benevolent dictatorships? Or should we just not go back to that circle? I do function there within the confines of a benevolent dictatorship. <laughs> as long as you're aligned with or the actual di dictator. Yeah. But it kind of comes as part of the employment agreement, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I think Sam Neill's m movie Sleeping Dogs is, is compulsory watching for, for people these days. should definitely... I have not Speaking watched it. Speaking of Kiwis that are uh, great Australians, good afternoon, Ross. <laughs> Come in and rescue the conversation. <laughs> Throw us a life ring. Six with three literary tastes fun included and uh <laughs> literary tests I told you the video is going to get pulled it's going to get stop you're killing me I can't paint if I'm laughing <laughs> oh goodness me this episode will have to have an innuendo warning on us oh as well. Yes, you never can tell who's listening. Nope. We kind of figured you were online, so you might have been. <laughs> yeah, but I figured I couldn't do accounting crap while trying to talk at the same time without making mistakes, so... Uh, making mistakes in the accounting or the talking? Because we've been making yeah, yeah. plenty of mistakes in the talking. You know, and I answer yes. Yeah. How's the weather? Has it stopped raining yet? Uh, today is actually a glorious day. A little bit cool, but the uh, sun is shining. And rain's supposed to come again tonight and wash out the rest of the weekend. There you go. Well, rain would be good over the, on the west coast, I think, at the moment, wouldn't it? I was yeah. reading about the drought, California. Oh, come on. California's in drought three years out of five, isn't it? Yeah, but they're last week one of the state water boards that allocates water to municipalities and other places said okay here's we've decided how much you're going to get this year this year being 2022 and the amount is zero wow that's bad so <clears throat> um you know we're technically prob i think we're technically not in the drought now just because of the rain we've had in the last couple of months but uh, there's no question that uh, reservoirs and stocks need to be refilled Are you allowed to collect rainwater, Ross, in, in Oregon? Is that, a, is that a thing that's allowed, or just out of curiosity for homes? Or um, Yeah, no, I actually have a 3,000-gallon tank in the ground to collect irrigation water, you know, water for the garden sure. kind of thing. Yep. Uh, you know, we're out in the boondocks here, so they don't really, all they care about is uh, impermeable areas. You're limited in how much ground you can cover that the rain can't soak into. But otherwise, so that's as much as you want. That's like paving on concrete and right. The, the square footage, you know, the area that your that the residence takes up, that your buildings take up. Oh, is that that's included? Mm -hmm. So, the fact that you've got gutters on your house and stormwater systems to channel the water away doesn't count. Right, that water is falling, it's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, again, not really that critical in my neck of the woods, but it is something that you have to include in your plans. Yeah, 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 reasonable. We, we have the same rules, so it all makes sense. Um, and thankfully, you know, we live on a slope, so I'm not going to get flooded, or let's put it this way, it would take an extraordinary event to get flooded. So. Mm -hmm. snow on the other hand yep there is that when's that due to start uh, it can start 
any time now in December. Right. Um, but uh, you know, last week has been mild. Uh, we still really haven't been below freezing yet here at our place. Uh, you know, it usually just comes right in time for Christmas. The uh, the local school system always schedules their winter vacation as early in December as they can manage it because they know bad stuff happens at the end of December on. So let's get the kids out of school to start with, you know, so we don't have to worry about that. Right. Do you get snow, James? Oh, absolutely. We're in a cooler part of the country than, uh, than where uh, Ross is. But we're, we're we're south of Cincinnati, so we're not we're not in you know what I call the the the, the, the Great Lake zone, which you know gets it pretty hard. Mm. But we've got snow scheduled next week, so um, we'll probably be the first major fall, um, one one to three inches. We'll see. Weather is just all over the place at the moment. It's just changing on a daily basis. It's weird. Yeah. We're just wondering if we'll get this, you know, this kind of storms that we got last year. I don't know. I think I mentioned that, you know, we had a eight feet of snow in the road in front of our house last year mm. in January. Yeah. I was not aware of that. Wow. I didn't realize that you guys got uh, stormed out that, that bad. If conditions are right. Um, you know, we're at the mouth of the Columbia River Gorge. And, oh, uh, right. Okay. And we're at a thousand feet, and if we get yep. a nice, warm moisture coming in, and it meets that uh, that cold air coming out of the gorge, uh, you really pay attention to where the ice line is and the snow line is, and that sort of thing. Yeah, most of the tops of all of the trees in the neighborhood have been broken off because of ice and that sort of thing. So just depends some years we'll get nothing so yeah i take that back then dan sounds like ross is actually in the worst part of the country <laughs> the snow than we are. We've, we've we've never gotten eight well touch wood i don't want it this year but we've we've never gotten that, that much snow where we live here in the time that we've been here at least but but then we've got friends who are like uh, up in dayton you know um sort of 40 minutes north of Cin Cin Cincinnati and they you know they get plenty of snow there just weird yeah, it depends which way the wind blows how cold it is well this week Probably. here I felt like I'd moved to be net Maddie's next door neighbor so yeah. you were bragging about 86 right yeah 30 degrees centigrade and 65 70% humidity. You can keep that. Yeah, I can, I'm working in a big steel structure. I was going to say, you've got air conditioning in your uh, nope. master plan for the. Uh... Nope. No, I do not. I am well and truly out of money. Letting my the numbness in my fingers <laughs> dissipate. So Todd's not joining us today, Ross. Uh, last note I saw said he might be running a little bit late. Right. Did you get those other fly throughs? Yes. And they were better? Yeah, I think they show more of what we want to show. Okay. Um, That's fine. I can I can keep producing them to experiment if you like. Well the the, the real question is, um, is there anything we can do to make them smoother? Mm. Some of your passes have little hesitations in them. Yeah, jerks and 
That, that I don't know whether I got a dud one of those DJI Osmos or something like that, but like, yeah, I don't. it's on, it's on the track, and it, I'm using the the handle on the wheel, and I'm trying to be as smooth as possible, and still the phone jerks. like the tension in the lines are might be slack that's causing that might be maybe I'll tighten those up and see but uh, yeah I sent out an email earlier about the uh, the pilot cards and uh, Todd responded to that so he was he is working today yep he's about I was interested that Don didn't come back, so is everything still okay with him? Well, he's got um, family medical crap that he's dealing with that completely blows up his schedule at any given time. Right. Um, and he, unlike the rest of us, doesn't spend his, uh, doesn't have his uh, email system up and running uh, on his on a second screen. Uh, so sometimes emails uh, take a while for her to find him, shall we say. Okay. find those orcs, Jane? I have not. I've been um, focusing on job hunting, sorry. <laughs> I had one of uh, one of two go-tos to go to there, was to ask you whether you'd found the orcs, or to ask Ross what he was painting. <laughs> I'm just Go, go ahead, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what Maddie's painting. Do you? No, actually, what I am don't. I <laughs> <laughs> you were polishing your boots. Oh, yeah, I finished that. No, I'm painting Thane Ghost Bear Warriors. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I, I love those guys. And yes, before you ask, I am going to paint them in a blue, light blue, grey sort of colour scheme, like a certain clan of the same name. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, I had something for you, Ross. I got MechWarrior 5 on PS4. I fired it up the other day. I hate it. I really don't like the way that the movement works. We should play some today, Dan. <laughs> I don't have I'm, time, Eddie. I'm, I'm forever spoiled about that. So yes. Full cockpit, uh, <laughs> You're not interested. <laughs> You're not interested. <laughs> oh, yep. Fair, uh, very, very fair <laughs> point. Very, very fair point. Yeah. No. Forty years now, almost forty years for Mech Warrior. Yeah. I was so disappointed. It's like I'm gonna have to to throw ten or fifteen hours at this game just to be able to move around without running into stuff and losing my way and and like I'm like. Should have got it on PC. I don't have a PC that will run it, Manny. Yeah. <sighs> Get a PC that will run it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've just spent all my money on a workshop. <laughs> <clears throat> have you regaled the others with your... Uh, I guess we don't want to do that with uh, James's predicament, but with your job? Uh, no, no, I didn't say anything about it. We talked talked about the fact that I have currently a team of one and a half, but I didn't I didn't mention anything about promotions and pay rises and stuff. 
My upper predicament's fine. I've got a nice severance package, so it's all good. <laughs> and he's got three turkeys in the freezer, Ross. He's not struggling. I, I mean, until the uh, the fire that cut the power for five days and we lost everything in our two deep freezers, <laughs> I'm with James. Um, before, you know, in 2016, 2017, grocery stores would give you, know, you spend $150 at the grocery store, they'll give you a turkey. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that we ever had three at a time, but I certainly had two uh, well after Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm. I don't realise that you, you get so much. I mean, we'd, we'd previously gotten a turkey it was just like you know just a uh, let, let's just get a boneless turkey and and kind of be be done with it so this is the first year i actually got what i call you know a turkey a 20 pound is a fairly large bird um man the amount of meat that, that you get off it is, is incredible um but then again doing canning as well it's there hasn't been any wastage on it with no, you, you pick the carcass as clean as you can during the big meal, and then you have sandwiches for two or three days after that, and then you yep. make soup with the carcass. And, yeah. That's it. And if you make, make too much, I mean, I both threw the carcass and got six quarts canned. We still had enough for lunch and dinner, and there was still leftovers for, with, with noodles for the kids for a couple of days. It was, And that's, the, that's just off the turkey carcass. So <laughs> it was great. Um, particularly since we're trying to cut, cut costs, so um, yeah, that was good. Very impressed. So I think I think we're going to add turkeys to the livestock. But, uh, how many? How what is the what is the variety now, James? <laughs> well, I, 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 we've got pigs, two two pigs, which are going to get um, going to get uh, freezified. Um, 11 chickens, 10 Muscovy ducks, um, the chickens I think are done so we're gonna they're gonna graduate to the freezer. Out of the ducks four of those are, are gonna go early and we've got um, eight sheep at the moment, two rams are going to be um, graduated and we're in the middle of lambing season so I, I don't know how many extra lambs we're gonna get. If the girls, the the, the the keepers, if the boys, they're going to get raised to weight and, and then graduate. So. Got the protein covered. Yeah, well, given, given meat prices at the moment, um, I'm kind of glad that we that we did what, what we did. But uh, we won't have a garden next year, so what we've got is what we've got. We're not going to be replacing livestock um, until we move to Tennessee, so we'll see how we go. Of course, I'll be close to the studio too. <laughs> <laughs> well, how far into Tennessee are you going? Just to... We're to be determined. Um, we're looking at, at mid mid Tennessee, so I'd say probably probably roughly halfway between Nashville and Knoxville. So we'll be. Um, if we end up where, where we hope we'll be, um, it'll be in the in the um, in the Appalachians, um, Cumberland Plateau specifically is where I'm where I'm looking. So I'd say it's I think it's about about an hour about an hour fifteen away from Knoxville. I think maybe two hours away from Nashville. Uh, a long time ago, I spent a summer. We lived in uh, just outside Oak Ridge for the summer. Lovely. That's nice. There's quite a variety of quite a variety of um, terrain down there. Didn't realise until we'd actually done done a trip over to the west west side of uh, Tennessee, and that was was completely different. It's really interesting. A lot of rivers. Yeah. No. TVA is a. Amazing thing. Good afternoon, Todd. Good afternoon. Hey, Todd. 
but then there was this time that Todd did that thing that we were just talking about, and we laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> just like that. Did Did you sell the small RV? No, nah, it's still for sale. That's kind of a contradiction in terms, though, isn't it? Really, small RV. Small compared to the other one. Well, yeah, but that's only relative. You could tow the small RV behind the large RV, <laughs> and then behind the small RV have the car. <laughs> and it, and if the, the domestic situation deteriorates, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I should have looked like for the 800 horsepower diesel engine, and then uh... <laughs> just put a bigger turbo big on road it. Road train. Or just tell people that's your man cave and, and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. That's the one that you take to uh, game game conventions. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but but Todd, that's what, what you've divested yourself of most of that stuff, though, right? Oh, my gaming stuff. I've got enough. I've still got dice. I, <laughs> I would say you can never have enough. No, there's no such thing. And, and and Ross, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poke the bear here and say he's still got dice. You had to go and buy some. Oh, man. <laughs> Never live that down. <laughs> <laughs> you, there, there, there'll be a box in there. You'll open the box and you'll go, right, there's only 25,000 dice in here. <laughs> uh, I know I've got a bag or two, but I'm not sure if they're 10 sizes or 6 sizes. Right. But I really would like to find my original gaming dice, you know, my original uh, 20 siders that are, uh, you know, worn down and are now spheres. And yep. Yep. The ones that the have ones had all of that karma. The original soft. Yep. Yep. With the with with a crayon. Mm -hmm. the stories those dice could tell. Mm-hmm. Great truth to that. I've got a set of D6 here, crystal D6 that we used to play Risk with, and they've got the corners knocked off them and cracks and stuff all the way through them. That was the good old days of D&D, &D when D&D &D was still in booklet format. We had orcs running around with plus one swords that only orcs could use so mm. that they could hit people on twenties, you know. Just because when you're when you're a kid, you're a kid, so uh I'm still a kid. Just one that fits 170. What's the time? We'll get that down. <laughs> Divide that by Divide that by uh, ten. And <laughs> years or so. um, Newt. Newt. Plat platypus years. There you go. Platypus years. You feel like one hundred and seventy, but you're really seventeen and 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 platypus years. That's right. It's more like elf years. I was considering that the other day. It's like I, I was out there working and I was doing something, assembling something. And the puppy was running around looking at me with, with a ball in her mouth, nudging me in the back of the legs, going, come on, Dad, play with me, play with me, play with me. And looking at her going, she must think I'm some kind of um, immortal wizard because I'm not aging in her eyes, whereas she's growing up very quickly, and I'm doing stuff that she's beyond, completely beyond her comprehension. So I was like, hmm. Interesting. And she completely trusts you to play mm. fetch with, with with the ball. Yep. So wasn't that same something? Yep. Yep. You're a benevolent dictator after all, so that's good. Oh no, I'm a demigod. Well, at least it hasn't gone to your head. No. <laughs> breakfast is delivered uh, no this is puppies going off to puppy school no. she going to learn how to behave with other puppies 
And that's the two hour mark. So I it guess is. you're all gonna go gonna go talk business and We are. So Maddie's gonna go chow down on chocolate honeycomb. Jealous. <laughs> and freeze dried mm. gummy bears. I'm gonna bow out and go and chase ducks just because it's dark and they need chasing to go to bed. <laughs> Duck out, so to speak. My life is just sucky. <laughs> wait to, wait till you've got a job then it'll be sucky because you have to go to work during the day and sucky because there are animals in the evenings i'm actually looking forward to it because i won't feel guilty delegating it out to the children so well ah nice sorry about that ah nice i'm sorry I have do you want to eat tonight, tonight? <laughs> yeah it's off you go good stuff thank you gentlemen thank you for a very entertaining couple of hours uh, i appreciate the company more than I can say. Thanks for having us. No worries. And um, good to see some more uh, shrubbery emerging in uh, the <laughs> Demon Lord camp. So that's, that's great. Think shrub, act shrub. Yep. Good stuff. All right. They get, they get a plus one cover modifier and uh, foliage, so it's good. Yeah, they, they do that anyway because they're hiding behind their cannon. <laughs> good point. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much. I'll see you next week. Later. Cheers.